Autumn in Strathconnan, a time of enchantment as the glen explodes in a kaleidoscope of colour. But a time of hard graft too as the stag stocking season reaches its climax. This morning, Alec Branch, a property tycoon from Atlanta, is stalking on Strathconnan estate. His guide is Angus Cameron, one of the Glen's most experienced stalkers. Alec is an old hand at stalking, but it never gets easier. This is my fourth or fifth time here. It's for the, it's really very simple. It's just the, the, the exercise. Of course, it's the thrill of the hunt. It's so difficult to get to these animals without any cover. Most places I've ever hunted are, there's a great deal of forest or get up in stands and wait. And here you have to really fight for it. You, it's, a, you, it's much more of a feeling of accomplishment. The first glimpse of deer. At this time of year, mature stags are usually grouped with their hinds. But there are also unattached, immature males. Angus is concerned about keeping downwind of their quarry. Meanwhile, Angus Cameron's new boss, Moens Johansson, chief of the Danish Lego company, is meeting with his local manager. Strathconnan's 62,000 acres make it one of Scotland's biggest deer forests. Johansson relies heavily on Hans Henrik Jorgensen, his locally based factor. Jorgensen has decided that deer numbers on the estate must come down. This is in line with the policy of Scottish natural heritage, who are providing grant support to the new owners. What we are looking for at present take the deer numbers down from approximately 3,200 when we bought the estate two years ago to around 2,000 at year 2,000. And I hope by reducing it to that level, we will see natural regeneration coming in again. What we do, deer management-wise, on, on Strakonen will influence some of our, our neighbors. I don't think we'll influence them heavily because we take a lot of hinds off at present, but we, we might influence the number of stags. Donald McLeod has been a shepherd all his life. As part of the new owner's policy on regenerating the land and planting trees where sheep once grazed, the Strathconnan flock has had to go. When I came here 23 years ago, there were three shepherds here, and they had sheep here and further up the glen, up at the my doll Bahanas that had it when I came here. And they changed hands. There was about 1,700 sheep here and they were cleared off. It was an awful wrench to me the day they went off here, loading the sheep onto the lorry and see them going down the road. It's like losing my right arm. And as I say, I was fortunate the, the new owners that kept me on as an estate worker and quite happy with them. They're very good folk, folk to work with. Strakonan carried around 1,800 ewes uh, before we bought it. And we really felt that with the amount of sheep plus the amount of deer didn't reflect the quality of the vegetation. And we felt because the sheep is harder on the ground than the deer, that we would rather see the sheep go. And then we could manage the deer to whatever level we had to take it to. We fully, of course, understand that it was of major concern to a lot of people. But the good thing about it is, in fact, that all the employees is still retained. And I think that's probably the most important thing. Mons Johansson definitely didn't buy the estate to, to sheep farm. And I think he was keen on, on working with the landscape and with the environment. And I honestly don't see sheep fitting into that idea. It's hard for me to believe that the sheep are making that much of a damage because we had sheep down the road I mean, there all the year round, you know, and you see tree shoots growing there, birch trees growing there, and the sheep lying there all the year round. And I don't think they're making all that much damage. We're clearing off the folk to take more room for sheep, now they're clearing off the sheep to make room for trees. But we get hungry for eating trees and, and grass. <laughs> I've got a few sheep on my own here and it keeps me amused. 
The rare breed that sent killed the sheep, they have them up at the big house there. There were 20 of them there, and not the very interesting to work on, but I would rather the, black, the pure black faces sheep. That's, that's the one I was used to, and I quite like them. How do you think we can get into there? Well, we'll keep out round on the right, and we'll drop in above the way the wind is. Yeah. And um, I think we should be able to make something of him if everything goes well. Well, let's have a go. Right. Angus has spied a stag resting and partly concealed in a peat hag. Right. We must be pushing our luck with the wind. See if we get back round. He's looking then to the right now. I'm going round the bitty. Go. Now Angus and Gilly Andrew McGilvery have to get Alec Branch within shooting distance. has not begun well. The stag is gone, the long trek begins to find another. When they're young dogs as pups, you know, you give them commands, a different tune for turning right and a different tune for turning left, and then uh, a longer tune for coming back to you and the same for going away. It's very important that the dog knows a command for a left-hand turn or a right-hand turn. So that's the way I work them. You work the dogs in the field and then they're put, put for auction. I got £400 for a, for a dog out there one year. I was quite pleased. And when I gave up the shepherding here, I advertised a dog too. and oh, I got a good, good price for it. And I'm not telling you the television what I got for it. <laughs> I got a bitch there called Lassie. She's have a very good strain. And I got a line with another dog fortnight ago and there's been three pups booked already so I'm hoping they'll be ready after New Year and let's see what they'll turn out like. It's a very beautiful glen I think, especially at this time of year when the trees are changing colour and all the different colours in the trees. And the folk here, they're very nice folk too. And saying that, you know, there's a lot of the old folk that's not here now and there's a lot of newcomers in it and it'll be a different way of life when newcomers come into a glen. Duncan MacDonald is one of the Glen's few remaining natives. A ghillie and pony man on Strathconnan estate, Duncan has gruesome work to do in the game larder, while Angus Cameron and his party are on the hill. Duncan prepares the trophies from the previous day's stock, but he stays in radio contact with Angus, and eventually it will be Duncan and his pony that go out to carry the stag home. No getting near any of that stuff that's sitting in there. Lots of lookout. Pardon? Lots of hinds looking out. What is it about the vagaries of highland autumn weather and the frustrations of stocking that attract wealthy Americans year after year? It's a long way to come. It's obviously this countryside, the effort, the air, the beauty of Scotland. A chance to spend some time with friendly, smiling Angus up here on the hill. <laughs> so what are we going to do now? Once we finish a piece, we'll have a look round at uh, Tolochan and see what's doing round there. Are you going to be able to get a pony up here to get... Uh... No, we'll have to drag it out and we'll take it down into Glencoe. Who's we? Who's we? <laughs> <laughs> and when there's rope. <laughs> Great. And um, Dunk will be in Glencoe with the pony. Most days we do get beasts, stag or two. Some days no, just blank days in it. 
think mostly from down in Angus Glens and East Grampians and that. That's a big build up of deer there. But other parts are not not so much. But we're not too heavily stocked here, I would say, taking it mm -hmm. overall, all the forest round about us. But uh, further south, uh, there is a problem, I gather. We cut back slightly on stags this year. We killed just over 100. And hinds? How many last year, for example? We killed um, over 700 with hinds and calves last year. That's a lot of work. Um, we'll be killing quite a number this year. Possibly the same, maybe not, but we'll be killing mm -hmm. a lot, quite a number of hinds this year again. Meanwhile, on the neighbouring smaller estate of Skardroy, Angus Cameron's close friend and fellow stalker Colin Henry is also involved in a stalk. But Colin's Canadian boss, Dr Murdoch Lang, has chosen not to follow his neighbour's lead in cutting back deer numbers on Skardroy. I would not expect to want to remove more than about 35 or maximally 40 stags from the hill in a season. And hinds, in fact, considerably less. Now, my neighbour, who's actually all around me, more or less, um, has got huge hind reserves. I think last year they shot something like 500 hinds on the estate, partly in response to the Red Deer Commission's um, edict that more should be shot. We couldn't do that. I mean, they shot 500, we shot 19. And, uh, you know, you just wouldn't go out and shoot all the ladies on a place because, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, there are obviously comparisons to be made with human life. Um, remove all the ladies, well, you probably won't get the boys. The traditional way of looking at a sporting estate and from a financial p point of view is very much that you, the value of an estate is not... Mm -hmm. um, reflected in the size of the estate or the quality of the land, but it's more reflected in the size of the deer population. Some of our neighbours still carry that, that view, and, and of course we have to respect that view. On the other hand, I would hate only to be able to do management-wise on Strakonen what, so to say, our neighbours would allow us to do. It's all very well if someone comes in on the ground at roughly your size, at roughly your level, and can be slowly, cautiously absorbed into the community. It's another thing when a sort of alien spaceship full of Danes arrives with billions and billions of krona and plops itself down on 62,000 acres of ground, which comprehends the whole of the village of Strathcon. It's an invasion. You know, for the mentality of people around here, it constitutes an invasion. Further down the glen on his croft, Nairn McEwan's problems with animal management are at a more basic level. His Shetland pony Hurricane has developed foot trouble. Nairn inherited the pony almost by accident. I bumped into somebody I knew who was involved with the RSPCA and uh, and said, we've got this Shetland, he's been abused, and, um... Uh, would I take him, I said, yes. I've got a bit of foot rot, and you've got to clean it every day and pare back the, the hoof. I know that I can cut so deep before I start hitting his nerves, I and mean, it goes way back to, to there somewhere, so I'm not harming him at all. And if I did, he'd soon uh, let me know about it, maybe over that hedge over there. <laughs> Former rugby star Nairn is also having problems getting a decision out of the Scottish Rugby Union about a possible role on their coaching staff. Hello, Scottish Rugby Union. Could I speak to Jim Telfer, please, for a minute? Hello, Jim. This is uh, Nair McEwen here. You remember I was speaking to you earlier about the possibility of me being involved in uh, developing rugby in the Highlands. Uh, yes. Nairn has had no regular income since he closed down his pub. If he doesn't find a job soon, he might be forced to leave the Glen. So you get in touch with me maybe, what, in a couple of weeks? And then you let me know how the committee decision went and uh, hopefully we can maybe have a meeting after that. The game of rugby in the form of Gerald Lane's giant statues for Twickenham are causing problems of their own at the sculptor's Kinkell Castle Studios. Gerald is up early to oversee their departure. The bronze figures are being given their final spit and polish 
before beginning their long journey south. Rugby itself gives the most incredibly exciting uh, images and, and positions which are held only for a moment by the players but can be frozen in the sculpture and demonstrated. So what I've tried to do with these four figures is take four very typical classic moments in the game, four different things going on. What we're sending down now is the, a forward leaping over the line and scoring a try with only his elbow and the ball on the ground. That's the most ambitious technically of the sculptures and also um, uh, a scrum half doing a sort of backwards pass over his shoulders almost from the scrum. And we've tried to show the ball just leaving his, his hand, so it's, it's supported only by his fingertips. One's never completely pleased, of course. They were, I found them extremely difficult. But um, now they're done, we'll see how they look on the gate. Loading's always pretty tricky, and uh, it's a test of the, uh, of the sculpture to see it yanked up in the air and hurtled across the sky and then lowered onto a lorry. And it's always a worrisome moment. And of course, we won't stop worrying until they're up and firmly fixed at Twickenham. They've got a 600 mile journey ahead of them on the back of this truck, after all. Yep. Something this size is um, not easy. Um, uh, just the sheer volume of it all and the, the, the technical details, as well as the off-balance uh, nature of the sculptures doesn't, doesn't help, but uh, we got around all that. I mean, it's uh, wonderful to have an opportunity like this to prove uh, what we know we can do here. Um, and uh, it's wonderful that they're going to be seen by so many people and on a subject matter that's, you know, so, uh, so dear to me. What's a hog? A, a peat hog. You see the right hand side of it. I can't make out his size. Ah, uh, it's a good enough stog. At last, after a long day, the quarry is in sight. The stock can begin for real. Got him. Yeah, he's still all right to try. He's down.
Hunters come home from the hill. It's the end of a perfect autumn day. Another stocking season is over. It's time to celebrate. In Strathconnan, everything stops for a Cayley, and tonight is no exception. The Glen's busiest time of the year has come to an end, and the folk of Strathconnan find new strength in weary limbs. Mine host for the Cayley is Nairn McEwen. Angus Cameron and his wife Jackie are here, as well as folk singer Sarah Gray and Mary the Post. Mary's brother Colin, stalker on Skadroy, shows a new side to his talents. OK, ladies and gentlemen, an end of a stalking season once again. So, uh, hope you'll all enjoy yourselves. I'll make plenty of noise and stamp your feet, you might not hear me playing. <laughs> On some estates, you get scenarios. You know, they will be running the marches, trying to shoot each other's deer, and you know, at, at loggerheads all the time. But we're lucky at Scordoy, very lucky. But, you know, the new owners have got their own policy, and, you know, fair play to them. But um, we'll just see how it will progress. I never know quite what my role should be here as far as music goes, but all I can say is that if people are interested in doing a bit of singing, I certainly love to do it on this level. It's so enjoyable for me just to, to be able to relax and get away from the stress of touring. I am an outsider. Um, I think it's a watchful time in the Glen. I think people are watching and waiting wondering how much growth is going to take place in Strathcona and how much do we want, you know. You can never keep change from happening, you know, I mean, it's just a, a natural progression of things. But on the other hand, with new ownership and so forth, I think that um, people are waiting and watching to see what, what is going to develop. <laughs> And as the first chill winds of winter whip in from the west, a wind of change is also abroad in the Glen. For some, it promises new opportunities. For others, niggling worries about what lies ahead. But for now, it's on with the party. 